Hello and welcome to my support guide. So, support is the role that accompanies the ADC in the bottom lane. The purpose of this role is assisting your AD carry in laning phase and throughout the game in order to secure the win. This is the most selfless role in League of Legends, and as well the hardest, since you need to be able to do multiple things in the same time. Like example, track the jungler, track summoner cooldowns, track enemy AD positioning, as well as your own AD's positioning, and more. There is a reason this role is the autofill nightmare. A lot of people hate not being in the spotlight, being the carry, but little do they know is that the support role is the glue. With a good player in this role that has the knowledge necessary and with a team that is willing to work with that person, a victory is easy to earn. Supports are also playmakers, but most of the time they are regarded as enablers and protectors. This role allows the other four, top, mid, jungle, and AD to shine. There are three types of supports champion-wise. Enchanters, Janna, Soraka, Nami, Lulu, Karma, Morgana, Sona, and Tarek. Mages, Bard, Zyra, Brand, Velkoz, Zerath, Miko, Malzahar, Vagar, Talia, Annie, Lux, and Zillion. And Hard Engage or Tanks, Leona, Rakan, Thresh, Alistar, Braum, Tom Kench, Nautilus, Shen, Poppy, Blitzcrank, and Pike. Now let's talk about each type. Enchanters. This set of champions are fairly low damage scaling champions. They thrive early levels when items and scaling defenses haven't kicked in yet, but fall off damage wise as the game goes because of their enabling oriented item builds. These champions are meant to protect and enable the ADC, making him feel like a wrecking ball. Sometimes ADCs might get way too excited and flash into the enemy team. Now that's not your fault. Their purpose is to basically protect, disengage, buff and enable. Do not get me wrong, these kind of supports can be playmakers also and have fairly scary roles, but more on that later. Here are the runes for these kinds of supports, mostly standard, starting with airy but may vary from case to case. The most important variations, at least in my case, are nullifying orb whenever I am into high damage bot lane or high damage nuke burst enemy team. Champions like Nami and Sona on the other hand need mana flow band since their mana costs are extremely high. For the next row I have it set up like this. Celerity for Janna and Soraka since this rune still benefits these two champions immensely. For Janna, make sure you check my Janna guide, where I explain in great detail why movement speed Janna is so important. And celerity on Soraka, let's just say it's nice when the ambulance gets to you in time. For the other two options, I will pick absolute focus if I am planning to play aggressive and transcendence if I know that I will not be over 70% HP in laning phase for too long. On the other row, I will pick Scorch for champions like Nami or Karma that are notorious lane bullies in order to maximize my lane pressure and damage. For heavy scaling shielders and healers such as Janna, Lulu and Soraka, I will always pick Gathering Storm since the flat stats it gives benefits my shields more than Scorch does. Secondary spec is resolved with bone plating whenever I am into all-in lanes like Leona or second wind whenever I am into poke lanes like Brand or Zara, and revitalize for shielders and healers or overgrowth. Best example is Morgana if you want to run Aerie as your main. I will be making a champion guide for Morgana and in that video I'll go more in depth about her room choices. For the last three rooms I will go double adaptive and scaling HP whenever I am confident I will win the matchup, or adaptive, armor or magic resist, and scaling HP, whenever I feel I won't be doing too well into the enemy duo lane. Now, for item builds. Here it's very simple. If you have shields and heals, like 99% of the champions on this list, you'll go nuts on forbidden idol items. A small tip, whenever you are ahead brush Arden, and whenever you are behind or even, get redemption. Build the kills only, if you're against heavy lockdown teams and prioritize Athenes over it whenever you can since it gives you a wealth of stats. 
boots, I recommend Nobis for almost all the champions here. Although I will say Nami does better with Swifties, since she can deactivate her Mobis the easiest out of all of these supports. And Morgana goes with Lucidity Boots, since she tends to overcap CDR, and she wants to run Transcendence, so she can get access to that flat AP as soon as possible. We're gonna build Zonia's Shirelia's Twin Shadows, and then Situational Items. Tarek. I recommend Defensive Boots on him, Locket and Knight's Vow, but building Redemption on him is not a bad choice, or even Ardent. Since the Forbidden Idol items have been buffed, making him a tank and an enchanter. Note, you are not really looking to flash in as Tarek, and since the funnel comp nerfs, he feels a bit weak. That's why you might get more value out of him just by simply building him as an enchanter. But of course, run a defensive room page. Time for laning pace. First off, make sure you path through a safe area. These kind of supports are very easy to cheese and get first blood on, and getting killed this early into the game can spell disaster very quickly. Make sure you avoid tri brush on blue side and river brush on red side. Now that you are in lane, your main priority is getting level 2. This is very important because whoever unlocks their second skill gets control of the lane early game, and that is crucial. Understand your champion and the fact that you are very squishy, and focus more on assisting your ADC in getting the first wave and have to get the level advantage without putting yourself in harm's way. Early game these champions have decent to very good harass, such as Nami, Karma and Morgana. Even Lulu played more damage oriented, allowing you to poke from a safe distance and create pressure in lane giving your ADC the choice of farming or assisting you for a potential long trade or kill. Matchup wise, it is very simple, Harding East champions tend to ruin you, but champions like Janna or Nami have a better time into them. On the other hand, hard poke mages like Zyra or Brand can create some early issues for you since you cannot out-sustain their early damage. In general, my advice is play around your cooldowns and don't walk up or overextend when you have key skills down. Playstyle wise, there are two scenarios for these kinds of supports. One, where you are on the winning side. Make sure you poke and pressure the enemy duo lane and position yourself correctly and the second you spot a gank, so you can react and maybe turn a 2v3. 2. Where you are the one getting harassed out of your mind. Make sure you don't die in these kinds of situations and wait for your jungler to gank. When he does, do everything you can to get something out of that gank, or else the lane will go even further into their favor. Time to roam. A lot of people might flame me in the comment section, but please restrain yourself, because enchanters roam. And boy do they roam. Thinking you cannot just dumps you down. As long as you take a leap of faith, there is nothing these champions cannot do. For example, my favorite champion to roam with is Soraka. After my first back, I go straight mid and bait the enemy mids to engage on mine. I heal my mid laner and there you have it. These supports don't have the engage needed for a roam, but if you time your roam right, like tracking the enemy jungler, you can find yourself in a good fight where you turn and save your mid laner. And he will love you for that. Look for a roam when your ADC recalled, after you recalled, or when your AD is being a beast and 1v2ing the enemy duo lane. Wording. Wording is a part of any support's job description, but these kind of supports? Bad, it gets tricky since, well, if you get caught, you blow up or you blow your flash and then you blow up. Use the skills in your kit to face check any area that you feel unsafe to walk in. But the best way is keeping track of their jungler just by looking at his CS numbers and where he was last seen. That way you will always know what side of the map he is on and where is safe for you to go. Also, make sure you watch my basic wording guide where you will find a lot of tips about deep wording patterns. Let's talk about objective control as an enchanter. Here's where you shine. Dragon and Baron is easy take since your entire kit is based around zoning, enabling, protecting, and disengaging. It is very difficult to go and contest an objective that has an enchanter there. As for sieging, if you are playing Janna or Soraka, sit back and relax. There is no need for you to walk up. You want them to engage on your team because that's where you shine. Kining back is your forte. If you are playing Nami or Morgana, walk up every time your Q is ready and try to land it. A pick under their tower means one kill in a tower or at least a tower. For the rest, more harass-oriented enchanters like Karma, just poke the sunshine out of them. 
One thing to be aware of in these objective control situations, make sure your flanks are warded. You are weak to strong flankers and if they get on you, things can get messy if you are not fast with your buttons. So team fighting with enchanters is easy and hard at the same time. Understand, you are the enabler for your AD carry. He is your main priority. He is the only recipient of your shield. In Janna's case, make sure you use your ult for disengage and heal purposes. But for most of the team fighting part of the game, do not leave your ADC's side. Make sure you buff him and you use your actives on him. That way he is safe to dish out the necessary damage to win the fight. Understand it is okay sometimes to give your HP bar for your AD. Putting yourself between him and the people trying to kill him buys the necessary time to kill them and it, even if you die in the process, the fight is most likely still won because of your sacrifice. Good positioning might allow you to escape while doing this. Avoid skill shots that can lock you down and remember never stop moving. Play your movement speed stats and milk them for all they're worth. Mages. Welcome to the rejects of mid lane, the support mages. These champions have very good early game and most of them scale really good into late game teamfight monsters. Understand that most of them do not peel as much as enchanters, but the damage that they do and the CC that they provide allows them to be as much as a threat as your ADC. One thing I want to say here is avoid playing immobile hyper carries with them like Jinx or Kog'Maw. As I said before, they have no way of properly protecting them. So let's talk about runes. This is very straightforward. You have two choices that I see viable and take everything you need. One, you scale into Domination with Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, and Secondary and Sorcery with Mana Flow Band and Scorch. The second option is Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Bandle Nullifying Orb, Absolute Focus, Scorch, and Secondary Resolve with defensive options if you are into all-in matchups like Leona, Blitzcrank, Thresh, and you do want some defenses. Make sure you have double adaptive, and the third one will be your def for defensive purposes. Item-wise, there are two paths. One, for Bard and Zillion, you want to go Spell Thieves, upgraded, then Twin Shadows and Shirelias, and from there on, AP items that give CDR until you reach 40%. You can go full AP or tank. I prefer the latter for these two champions since their damage becomes very underwhelming as the game goes. For boots, I will pick Lucidities or Mobies for these two. Second option, for the rest of the mages, I love the full pen belt. Search Shoes, Moral and Nomicon, Leandries, and Void Staff. And your last item, either Defensive Zonias or Banshees, or Rabadons if you are that ahead. So, let's talk about laning phase. Laning phase is fairly easy as well. You will end up pushing no matter how you look at it. Um, you want to harass as these champions and most of it is AoE so it will hit minions. Prepare your AD for having to perma push the lane though. This may be good since you punish an enemy duo lane under tower much better than you do in the middle of the lane. How to get level 2. Make sure you auto attack the casters one time each and you keep the pressure up. Your AD should do the rest. The purpose of these champions is to harass and deny as much farm as possible from the enemy dueling. Do not forget that you are also very squishy, so you might want to step back whenever your main CC skill is on cooldown, for example Zyra's E, and walk back up when it's out of cooldown since you can also defend yourself with that skill from a potential all-in. Another tip is make sure you keep your vision up. As much as you are a strong laner, once you use your flash and you continue pushing, you are opening yourself to a lot of threats such as a jungle or and a mid lane roaming on you. And without your flash, you are a very easy target to pick off. Another thing you want to do with these champions is, is invade the enemy jungle with your jungler. Since your damage is fairly high, you can easily get an advantage after a successful invade. Roaming as a mage is perfectly fine as long as you are smart about it. Make sure you take a safe worded route, make sure you keep track of the enemy jungler and every mid lane summoner. If everything is in your favor, go mid and go nuts. It's a guaranteed kill. Vision wise is a bit difficult since some of these champions cannot face check reliably. In order not to, you know, int while you get vision down, ask your jungler or mid laner to come with you while you are placing the wards for objectives. Objective control and team fighting. I put these two together here because these champions have a pattern. They love it when people run towards them. It makes it so much easier to have to deal with someone face shaking you or just flat out running at you. 
you land your combo and it's game over. Make sure you keep correct vision up and you should be able to turn around any objective contest or engage as long as the stun is not on you. Something to take in consideration is, you can also play a pick support, especially when playing something like Bard, Zyra or Nico. Land any CC or slow on someone and make sure your team is there to follow up and you can get a kill that can turn into an objective and maybe the GG screen. Hard engage tanks. Welcome to the League of Tanks and Hard Engage, probably the worst nightmare of every AD carry when facing someone that mains these kind of champions. I know I hate laning versus them in the hands of a good player because every misstep is my downfall. Let's talk about rooms. I will talk about each champion room page and a group of few of them that share the same room pages. Rock on. Guardian, Shield Bash, mostly for the extra defenses you get from it, but the bonus damage is nice as well. Bone Plating, Revitalize. Secondary Sorcery, Celerity, and Nimbus Cloak. For a more in-depth explanation of why I chose the movement speed route, make sure you check out my Rakan Champion Guide. And the last three I will take. Attack Speed, Armor and MR, Scaling HP, Armor or Magic Resist, depending on my matchup. Usually, I will go for Armor and HP. Thrash and Blitzcrank. Guardian, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Secondary Sorcery, Manaful Band, and Transcendence. As the last three, Scaling CDR, Armor, and HP or Magic Resist depending on my matchup. This is the room page I will run when I want to play with Ancient Coin. Here is the second option, Guardian, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, and Secondary Inspiration with Minion Dematerializer and Cosmic Insight. The rest of those three are same as previously. I will run this page whenever I am into a matchup that has a lot of wave clear and harass to make sure that my carry gets cannon minions. Basically, do not use your dematerializer on anything else but cannon minions when you have a relic shield stack. Yes, you will buy relic shield with this room page. Braum and Tom Kench. Guardian, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Secondary Inspiration with Minion Dematerializer and Cosmic Insight. Shen. Aftershock, Font of Life, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Secondary, Domination with Zombie Ward and Ultimate Hunter. Poppy, Aftershock, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, Overgrowth, Secondary Inspiration with Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. Leona, Alistar, Nautilus and Pike. Aftershock, Font of Life, Shield Bash in Nautilus's case, Bone Plating, Overgrowth and Secondary Precision with Triumph and Coup de Gras. These runes are my setups and I do not expect everybody to agree. I tested a lot of interactions and I find these ones the most useful. Also, I recommend to use Minion Dematerializer every time you are into a high wave clear lane to guarantee yourself and your AD carry cannon creep gold. Let's talk about items. Here I will talk about Rakan and Thresh separated and then the rest. Since Rakan and Thresh are considered semi-ranged, building Knight's Vow on them is not really gold efficient since you will only get 50% of the stats that it gives as a melee champion meaning less damage reduction, less damage shared, and less damage healed, meaning for the money you pay for it, you get 50% of the value. This is why these two champions tend to build Locket and Shirelia's or Zeki's Convergence. Afterwards, I build Situational depending on what my team needs, example, Redemption. Note, Rakan can buy Arden first item. For the rest of them, I will always rush Knight's Vow and Locket of the Iron Solari with them. The rest of the build, I usually like to go full tank. Again, this is my build. Providing peels and a healthy frontline for my team is my plan. Boots-wise, I don't recommend mobies unless you are a master at roaming and being efficient with your time. If you feel roaming is still something you need to work on, then going tank-oriented boots is a very good option. Laning phase with these champions, in my eyes, is mostly a coin flip. A lot of you may feel the pressure to have to go for the picks, engages in order to bring value to your champion, but sometimes you might forget this. If you miss your main engage, pick skill, example Thrush, Blitzcrank, Hook, Leona, E, etc., you leave yourself and your AD open to harass or a possible return all that. Also, into disengage lane like Jenna, for instance, where she can cancel your dashes and long channeling skills, you need to time them much better. Here is a tip how to play lane with them. Make sure you aim level 2. As I said before, this is the first and most important step in bot lane. After, play the punish game. Like, 
overextended past minion wave, misuses of important cooldowns, auto attacking, minion aggro, make sure you watch these things and like that you will be able to play aggressive and safe in the same time. Most of these champions have interesting if not hard-ish matchups, play smart and react to your opponent's mistakes and you are guaranteed a snowball. If you see nothing can be done in lane, and your idea is safe to farm in the 1v2, make sure you roam. These champions have very potent roams and invades since they bring a massive amount of CC to the table. Make sure you know where the enemy jungler and mid laner is, and their summoners, and when the wards are, and go for the play. Vision and objective control with this group is fairly easy. They are such good face checkers, good initiators, and good peel machines if they choose to be one. So when setting up vision for an objectives or a team fight, make sure you create spacing between your team and the enemy team, especially in a contest situation. That way you can react to engage or appeal depending what is needed from you in that moment. Sieging is a bit boring. Unless you are a thrasher blitz and you land a game winning hook, the rest of these champions play more of a zone role than anything else. Most of the time, it's dangerous to tower dive, so you want to walk up safely and threaten a dive, but never actually committing to it. And last, team fighting. This is where they shine. Since they bring insane amount of CC to the table, meaning make sure you keep an eye on your ADC and CC the most important targets, like whoever is fed or whoever you think might deal the most damage to your team. Besides that, have fun in a team fight. Thank you everybody for watching my support guide. All of the links you need are down in the description with all of the other champion guides that I did so far and that you should definitely watch so everything I said here makes sense. And thank you again Kudi for editing another wonderful video. See you next time.